Welcome to Darnley Cyber Cafe, your podcast for cybersecurity, IT, technology, and business news. Now, introducing your host, Darnley Gresson Jr. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to my latest podcast of Darnley Cyber Cafe. So today we will be talking about the age-old question. In my 15 years as a uh, techie or so, if that even counts, but in the 10 plus years of being a professional, I've always was asked this question. And funny enough, over the last decade, the 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 sort of the the lockstep in terms of iPhone and Androids is really come to a, an interesting sort of event. So I get asked this a fair amount of times, to be honest, in terms of which device is more secure. Now, it is a loaded question, I'll tell you that much, because uh, as I go into this, uh, I'll explain why, but it's it's really a loaded question. And unfortunately, it's not as black and white as one would think. That could be indicative to any life decisions that you may have. It's not always A or B. It's either A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, etc. So it really comes down to um, the, the sort of environment you're in um, because you can't paint everything with the same brush. We all come from different backgrounds, different financial statuses, um, desires, interests, etc. To, to really say what is better. And But I will try to answer this the best way I can and the best way I know how by this podcast because I really want to sort of put this to rest. But I kind of want to give like a, a quick brief history lesson. I know the last, one, I, the last podcast I gave you a history lesson and I'll give you one again today. And the reason for these, these sort of these history lessons is basically for us to kind of gain acceptance in the evolution of our technology and how fast it moves. Just think about in, what was it, 2009 when the first iPhone got released? But for those who were in the technology environment pre-2009, there were only a few devices that were superior. You know, Windows had a phone. BlackBerry was king at the time. Uh, there, There was not really a... Uh, a player, BlackBerry, in terms of business, emails, internet, was the key player. Nokia had its time as well, if you remember Nokia. Uh, Samsung was just getting its its feet wet in the flip phone era. So there was a lot happening, and no one knew in 2021 we'd be here today. And given the fact that Samsung and Apple sort of like the are like the the top branded phones in the world. Um, and yes, there are other, there are other manufacturers out there. Don't get me wrong. Um, but really in terms of this particular podcast, you need to understand really, it's like everyone against Apple. And this has been really that same sort of fight from back in the eighties and nineties between Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Like there was always that competition, but there's one thing that you probably have realized is the fact that, you know, when it comes to Apple and and Mac or whatever, they usually set themselves apart from the status quo. And is that to just tick people off? I don't know, but it just comes down to Apple does things differently than everyone else. We all know that. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? That's completely up to your interpretation. But it really comes down to myself and the techies worldwide in terms of acknowledging which device is better in terms of usability and security. Now, going back to Apple and its sort of like its own dominance in the field, in, in some ways, you have to respect what these this company is trying to do and what it's been doing for many years. And like I said, since 2009, Apple literally revolutionized the smartphone market overnight. Like I remember this like yesterday. I was sitting there rocking my my BlackBerry Bold 
full keyboard. I love that thing. Don't get me wrong. It was, it was an amazing device. But when iPhone came out, it, 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 people were asking, I remember this like yesterday, that touchscreens were stupid. It was a horrible idea. It's too clunky, this and that with this. The, the 3GS, if I recall that correctly, the 3GS came out. But this bloody thing revolutionized the cell phone market. And then BlackBerry, unfortunately, as you can tell where BlackBerry is now on the market, and I'll you know, bless them. They were in the security market, and I respect that. But in terms of the cell phone, they're, they're long dead in the water, unfortunately. And it's sad because I was a huge BlackBerry fan before. And in some ways still am a BlackBerry fanboy. And I'm not worried or ashamed to admit that. But aside from that, BlackBerry's dead and gone for now. Um, but it really comes down to what device is more secure. So let's, let's talk about this. Let's take this apart and look at it individually. Now, full disclosure, I am neither an Apple fanboy or an Android fanboy. I rock both devices. I have... I operate on two different operating systems, PC and and uh, OS X alike. So I have no preference in these devices whatsoever. So you're going to say, darling, you're biased. You're Apple fanboy, Android fanboy. I'm not. I have no allegiance to any vendor. I look at the specs. I look at what the best bang for my buck and what the availability is for this product in my life. And I find sometimes that... A PC is a lot more intuitive, and a Mac is a lot more, you know, able device. So I can't say, I'm not sitting here saying I have only Apple devices or only Android and PCs. I have a, my ecosystem's mix, and doing, do what I, doing what I'm doing right now, it really comes down to being able to understand all the technologies and have an unbiased opinion over it, which allows me to be able to dispense this information to you to really let you know what is sort of like the best product or at the very least the most convenient product sort of the pros i'll start with iphone and i'll work my way to android after but the pros for android as some of you may or may not know um, it's very user friendly i have given my parents who are the least tech savvy people in the world um, an iPhone, and they were able to use it. They were able to manipulate it, turn it on, do different things on it. It was very intuitive. And this was kind of like my first test into believing if iPhones were indeed better because, you know, being, um, you know, budget conscious, uh, iPhones were more expensive and uh, required more capital. But I wanted to see the really, really the, the main reasons why um Apple was the best option. So aside from the user friendliness, the it's just the whole iOS ecosystem. If you have a, a tablet, a, a Mac, an iPhone, everything just syncs so well together. There's it's less cumbersome. It just works. It's it's like what Steve Jobs said. It was it's, it's supposed to work like an appliance and. It does, and very well, mind you. And, it, and it's come a long way since the 3GS, where the entire iPhone, iCloud, Mac system have become so entrenched into one another. They've been so compatible, and they just work really well and smooth like butter, if I would put that in some weird analogy. the Some, some of the apps that come pre-installed on the device is great. So out of the box, you're able to use your iPhone relatively quickly. Um, the What sort of turns me on is the iOS updates. Now I compare the, I, uh, the updates between an Apple uh, iPhone and an Android. And, and these are different Androids on Samsung platforms and LG platforms was that the iOS updates in the iPhones and tablets that I own Personally, the updates actually happen a lot faster. They're more frequent. In terms of a security standpoint, if you look at the sort of big picture with all the threats that are going on out there in the world, uh, you have to update relatively quickly. Some Android devices are updated last minute. They take over a year to get updated. Uh, it's some pretty scary stuff. And where Apple shines is the fact that it, it's attention to detail and it's, it's intention to, to provide a secure device. 
And that means always updating its iOS, updating apps, etc. This is kind of where this is kind of where Apple shines over Android. Uh, Apple has been very keen on privacy laws. Now, I to some of you that may come as a surprise coming from my mouth, but it is what it is. I'm calling the shots as they are. Um, a few times the FBI has asked the Federal Bureau of, Bureau of Investigation in, in the United States has asked Apple to um, give it um, code to unlock their, their device for a suspected criminal. And Apple was against it because if they were to give FBI that, they basically gave them access to all their devices all over the world. So they, they knew from the start that allowing certain uh, government agencies access to things as much as it means to put someone away, uh, which is a good thing to do, but they would be giving a government agency access to all of Apple's um, devices, which they, they were not ready to do. So seeing as how very uh, niche their Apple devices are and how many people own them, this is a good thing. Also, Apple doesn't really carry a lot of baggage. A lot of Android like flagship devices, stuff like that, carry a lot of junk on them that caused them to be a bit slower. Um, it, it just really wasn't uh, the best experience out of box. You may have to delete some apps. It just didn't work the way if you were to unbox an iPhone to use it. It's just a completely different experience. Um, the hardware is much better. Uh, I don't know if even if you bought the lowest edition, which I think is like an SC right now in November 2021, the SC phone was, yeah, it's 400 bucks, but that phone would work much better than a $150 Android uh, Samsung phone, like a J series, I believe. It would just work much better and a lot more smoother than an equivalent cheaper Android device. So yes, perhaps the price is a bit more in terms of the lower end models, but if you want to pick up an iPhone SE, yeah, it's not a flagship. It's not an iPhone 13 by any means, but at the very least, it's a device that works and works pretty well. It may not be super duper fast, but it, it will work very effectively. You also get with an uh, iPhone is Apple Care. Now, some people don't care. <laughs> See what I did there? Some people don't care about the Apple Care service, but those who are clumsy, who want that peace of mind, uh, Apple offers their Apple Care service, service which helps protect the device from you know breaks scratches you know updates upgrades whatever apple apple care would also give people a resource to call to be able to help out their device you can ask a zillion questions it'll be fine so that's really what comes down to this apple care service where you wouldn't find in an android operating system but now let's talk about why android is better in comparison between the Apple apps, or sorry, the Android apps versus the the Android apps. Android has about 3 million apps right now, give or take, on Google Play. And Apple, the App Store, has about 2 million on the App Store. So obviously, it seems to me anyways that Android has a lot more apps for it. It has a lot more abilities to download and do stuff because... There's there's a over a million more apps in Apple, and and that's great. Um, there are a plethora of different types of phones out there. There's a lot of phones out there in terms of what's available for Android. Android operating system is customizable and open, so there's a lot more you can do to it. There's more switches and knobs to flick and turn within an Android system. So if you love to customize your phone, there's a lot more you can do with it than comparison to the Apple phone. Um, in terms of the availability, there's ton like there are tons of manufacturers that use the Android platform, which also is on on Google. So if you don't have a Pixel, let's say for example, if you have a let's say a Samsung phone or LG phone for that matter, the your you can connect your Google ecosystem together. So I know I said earlier that Apple has its ecosystem. Yeah, Google has their ecosystem as well. So if you are a Google user or you have a you know work workplaces environment for your business, 
this is kind of where Android would shine because you can have full comp compatibility. You can connect your devices. You can connect your specific, um, your business account with this phone and be able to management as an IT company. So again, you're not spending a lot of capital costs, a thousand dollars on a phone. You actually can spend a bit less, less money in terms of the hardware availability and you can distribute that to your team at a rel relatively uh, affordable cost. Where you you pay more for Apple with an Android, you can get a hundred fifty dollar Android phone. If you're just uh, you're using it for the odd text, the odd phone call, and maybe the brief web browsing, you don't have to spend the four hundred dollars or the thousand dollars to get an iPhone. You can just go to the store and pick one up, and and away you go, and and that's it. So it's a much more affordable option for those who really need a phone that don't have doesn't have, doesn't want to spend a thousand dollars on a on a piece of hardware or, or a piece of brick another great thing and i know it's changing but there's a lot of expandable storage so a lot of the manufacturers are actually doing away with this especially on the android platform mind you i know samsung has done this which you know i don't agree on i've i've, I've owned samsung i've sent some devices before and they, i always love putting in the micro sd card to expand your storage because a micro SD card is much cheaper than getting cloud storage through Apple. So that, again, this is where Android is better because you're able to expand the storage. Now, again, like I said recently, um, some manufacturers like Samsung are building their Android phones without the ability to expand your storage, which is a, a kick in the butt. So it is what it is. The headphone jack, if some of you are still... Um, they still use that 3.5 millimeter jack on your devices. Most Android devices, like there's there's over, you know, nine uh, nine hundred thousand different types of phones, Android phones out there today, in circulation, and most of them have headphone headphone jacks in them. Yes, yeah, some of them now may have USB C headphone jacks. Uh, some of the higher end stuff are doing away with it. But most of the lower, the mid to lower end Android phones do have the, the headphone jack. So unlike Apple, which has done away with that, which I find, again, really not much of a contention here because most, most headphones are now Bluetooth. Most, most devices are moving away from the whole having connected to a wire thing, right? We're, moving, we're going towards a wireless society. So it makes sense to make sure your, your headphones are all wireless. Like that's pretty much what I do. I don't like things hanging around if I'm out for a run or I'm walking around with headphones in my ears. I would like that freedom of not being bound by cables. And I think a good majority of people like that as well, but there's still a necessity out there for it. I'm not going to complain about that. And lastly, for Android, why Android is better is the file management is a bit better uh, on an Android than there is on the iPhone. And that's something I've, I've seen over the years. Just the file management on Android is much better than what you would find on the Android. Now, I know with the whole um, PC versus Apple thing, and I get asked too, is why would I want to spend $2,000 on an iMac when I can spend $1,500 on a powerful PC? It's a great question. And again, just like the smartphones, is it really depends on your use. I'm not under the inclination that Macs are much more secure than PC. That's a fallacy. It may have been the case years and years ago. Not anymore. Cyber criminals are getting smart. They're looking at ways to get money. And believe me, they don't care what you have. They're going to get you one way or another. It's mostly the Macs, Mac users or Apple users who don't put any security on their devices. The reason why they get attacked so often is because they think they're operating system is going to save them from the plague but it won't it's going to they're going to find you one way or another so it really comes down to that is that you shouldn't rely on your operating system to protect you like i said it really comes down to that human firewall what's the thing between your two ears which is really will protect you from threats on your smart devices you know better security starts with you it starts with your human firewall you can't depend on the device to protect you because look at all the smishing attacks and the smishing attacks is a um, text message sms texting that are becoming more relevant today it's becoming more widespread 
and people are still falling for it. So if you get a text message from your bank, for example, asking you to click on something or to respond something, generally speaking, if you're caught off guard, you'll send them back the message. You may think it's harmless, but that's not the case. Both devices, more Android than iPhone, are vulnerable to these attacks. I'm not saying iPhone's immune. Let me make that very clear. They are vulnerable too. But if you want to look at this sort of like objectively, there are more Android phones out there than there are iPhones. So that being said, do the math. Statistically speaking, there's going to be more viruses built for Android than they would be for Apple. But there's still some, I don't want to say some, but there's still a lot made for, for Apple as well. But again, there's many arguments on both sides. I can, I can go on about this and tell you why one or the other is better. But I'll, I'll give you my sort of honest opinion of which one. Because you say, darling, let's choose one. We can't just kind of throw it up in the air and you get our hopes up and at, end this podcast and don't say anything. I will say something. Don't worry. Uh, rest assured, I will say something in terms of who wins this battle. Now, <laughs> that being said... Drum roll. I would say the most secure smart device is iPhone. Now, again, like I said, for those of you who are saying, oh, you know, Android's better, blah, blah, blah. Look, like I said, your device is, is only as good as you are. It's only as good as the protections you put in place, the intelligence that you have in terms of what apps you're installing. Because if you're just going and installing every app from Sunday on your device, you're going to encounter a breach. Or if you respond to text messages you're not sure of, or you make these presuppositions that this text may be your, your bank, or this email may be your bank, and you open the email, respond to the email, click on the link in your phone, then you're opening up your, your world into some pain. And that's not on the device. That's on you. Let's be honest here. Most of these cybersecurity threats do attack the human firewall. That's indicative to a PC, Mac, iPhone, Android user. It all comes down to the human being. But in terms of how it's packaged, how a device, how a company runs, I'd have to give the award to Apple. And I know I've, I've made podcasts about Apple, but them being breached by 13 year old, blah, blah, blah. I, I understand. But in terms of if in 2021, a device I would say I would put my name behind would be an iPhone. And the reason being is because Apple puts a lot of time into their ecosystem, into their, their apps. And the reason why there is more Android apps comparison to uh, uh, iPhone apps is because there are, there are less vetting on a the Google Play. There is some in Google. I'll make that clear. There's some Google, that's where you would see a little green check mark besides an app that was authenticated by Google Play. But that still doesn't, you know, minimize the fact that there are a million more apps out there in the app store, or the Google Play, than there are in Apple. But Apple actually goes through each application that gets launched in their ecosystem. They test it. They um, check it for malicious code. They take the time. They have people there making the effort into checking that device before they release on the ecosystem. So that extra level of protection in itself wins awards for me. Also, the fact that it has a, a somewhat closed ecosystem as well. Now, people fight with me all the time between open source and closed source. And there is a time and place for open source, but there's a time and place for closed source. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. But for the iPhone, the fact that it has its closed sort of closed source environment in some ways. And it's, and it's very, um, I don't say restrictive is the wrong word to say, but a very calculated, calculated operating system. This is where iPhone stands out in comparison to the rest of the Androids. And again, it all comes down to numbers and the odds. There's a higher odd in your Android device being compromised because of potentially a, um, illegitimate app that you may installed or it could have been because you clicked on something same thing for apple but at the end of the day the iphone's ecosystem is much easier to use there is a process in terms of what apps are allowed in the app store and it's just an all-around useful tool 
an essential appliance in our everyday lives, which would attribute to most listeners listening to this podcast. And an Android, albeit a cheaper alternative, a cheaper option, it's still a effective tool for those who are looking at a different way, a different ecosystem who do not want the Apple ecosystem because it comes down to choice too. Some people don't like the Apple interface and some people don't like the Android interface, but at the end of the day, it comes down to your personal taste, just like between what sort of foods you like, what you like, what you dislike and, and the colors you like or you dislike. It comes down to your preference, but in terms of the things that go on in the back end, hands down, the iPhone would be the winner in my books. There's ways to secure Android, which is a bit convoluted. If you're not an expert, you're not a professional like me, there are some things you can do to operate your Android safely. And I've done that for many years. But if you want something to work out of the gate with minimal effort, again, definitely, definitely would be the iPhone. So I really hope you've learned something and you've taken something away and you decide if you are in the decision to decide between an Android or, or Apple or vice versa. Um, don't worry about the switch switch away i switch back and forth all the time and i'm and i'm still my hair is still on so don't worry about that enjoy and i hope you make the right decision thank you for stopping by darnley cyber cafe with your host darnley gresson jr we hope you enjoyed your stay next time you swing by the cafe bring a friend and share the show with them that's all for this episode folks we will see you next time